everybody, what is up? My name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are husband and wife, and we'd like to welcome you to Paradise. Now this week was our anniversary, and lots of people left lots of nice comments. He said, oh wow, you're so compatible, you guys are so cute. Well today we're here to dispel those myths that we get along all the time by telling you six games that we do not agree on. <gasps> Now that's not to say we dislike any of these games. In fact, most of these games we're gonna mention we've actually included on top 10 lists before. No, it's more like one of us loves this game and the other one's like, ah, I'll play it because you wanna play it but I'm kinda tired of it or it's just not my cup of tea. That is what we're gonna talk about today. Now if that sounds like some juicy gossip you wanna hear, then just keep watching. talk about a game that Jonathan loves that I happen to disagree on. And that is One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Okay, so I love this game, guys. It is so quick to teach. What you'll do is you'll play a bunch of consecutive rounds that are really short. It's this tiny form factor box. It's great for bringing along to parties. Everybody gets a few rounds to kind of figure out what they're doing where they're like, oh, okay, I get it now. And then you start to add in more and more roles, make it more complex. It's just great for teaching new people. And I don't disagree anything that he said. We actually included One Night Ultimate Werewolf in our top games to play during Halloween. And I still stand by that but I'm over it. I am over this game. I have played it one too many times and I am just not into um, making it up as I go along and being like, I, I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. Wasn't me. I know a lot of people really enjoy this game and it's still gonna be one that I am suggesting to people. She and won't play it. I, I kind of, I don't play it. And even though I'm actually really good at it. All right, next up on this list is a game that Mackenzie loves that I just am, over, and that is Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective. I love this game. <laughs> I think the immersive experience in Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective is fantastic. And we did include this in our top 10 couples, top 10 games for couples, and I still stand by that. I think he would stand by that too. I just yeah, love yeah. the mm -hmm. concept of how you actually feel like you are solving a real murder, like that you are on the case. It's very open world that you can literally go in any direction, pick it up, and then it's you just figure it out as you go along. It's just, it doesn't feel like any other board game I've ever played, but it, we don't get to play it that often as much as I would like. Yeah, now you say it's open world, and I think the first two to three scenarios, I felt like I was having a lot of fun. I was like, yes, this is, this is good. But I think for me, the problem that I had was that I felt like no matter how many interviews I did, I always ended up back at the, the one or two interviews that they really wanted me to have. And I'm like, oh, oh, that's what the crime was. And I kind of felt like I always ended up back on the path that they wanted me to be on. And I kind of like, with all that reading I'm doing, I'm kind of like, why don't I just read a book or watch a TV show? Like, what? It, it didn't feel like I had to solve this puzzle because I felt like I could just do enough interviews and I would eventually get back to where I was supposed to be. I like this game. All right, moving up to the third one on this list. That is Arkham Horror, the living card game. Okay, folks, so I love this game. I think it's so, so awesome how it's just a deck of cards that does the plot, the uh, like all the storytelling, the scenery, the locations, the ghouls and ghosts, the player deck. You've also got these tokens that kind of will track attributes and all that. But what is so impressive to me is that all of this rich storytelling that you go through happens with a deck of cards. I think that's like the coolest thing ever. And what's great about that, with these scenarios being kind of long, like upwards of three hours sometimes, you can go to the store and just get those single packs and for six, seven bucks, you've got another three hours of like rich entertainment that you could do at least twice. So I just think that stuff is so cool and I just really like the system. So Arkham Horror for me, it's one of those games that I feel like I, I definitely need to revisit and I promised I so. him that we're going to, we're going to keep trying it. This October. <laughs> yeah, we are going to keep trying it and I do acknowledge that for lots of people it is a fantastic two player couple game when we did include it on the list. And so I acknowledge that. However, to me, the context of it, um, I, when I played, it was this weird combo. I was bored and terrified at the same time. <laughs> the cards are just really creepy and I didn't enjoy it. Um, however, <laughs> we have been getting into Supernatural a lot lately and we've actually been talking that we're just gonna pretend to be Sam and Dean instead. I'm gonna be Sam, he's gonna be Dean. And I <laughs> think I'll enjoy the game a lot more. Okay, it's my turn. Keeping in with the murder mystery theme, Honestly, this game, probably most serious gamers are going to roll their eyes at, but I don't care. I'm always up for a game of Clue. Let us in, let us in. Let us out, let us out. 
I absolutely adore this game. This was actually the first game I got into growing up. I have lots of really great memories of solving these mysteries with my family and friends and my grandma. So Clue is always going to be very close to my heart and I am always down for Clue. Um, Golden Girls Clue, I'll still play it with you. Like, I just think the mechanics and the heart of it is one of those classic games that I think is one of the best. But Jonathan didn't play this game until I showed it to him like two <laughs> years ago and he had a different experience. Okay, so Clue to me is less about solving a murder mystery and it is more about gaming the game. It's a game where you, you, you learn the system and then you break it and then you just can win every time. And I just, the first time I played it, I kind of felt like it was a club that I wasn't a part of and it's like everybody else knew what notes to write down and they just kind of had it where, oh yeah, yeah, I know how to solve this and they could, they could get it. Uh, but I love a little bit of beginner's luck. I love when a player can come in and be like, oh, they won the first time. Uh, but that's not going to happen with Clue, I'll tell you that. So. <laughs> you know what I have to say? That sounds like a sore loser. All right, sir, you're up next. What do you got? Nothing. <laughs> okay, so this is the one game on this list that we actually got rid of. It is out of our collection. I loved it. It was a great game, but it just did not click with this group. Yeah, so we live in New York City and shelf space is precious. So if both of us really aren't, if one of us isn't really clicking you with the game, it's not playing, you know, it's gotta go. Give it to somebody yeah. else who really wants it. Mm -hmm. So we were able to give it to a friend, it's all good. Uh, but this game is Oceans. Uh, so if you played Oceans by North Star Games, it has some really interesting mechanics. I think one thing that's really cool, you're evolving these animals, these creatures in the sea, and there's some mechanics that will actually like feed off the animals to the left and the right, which could be your own. They could also be another player somewhere else on the board. So what I loved about this is that you have to make the choices to have your animals feed off each other and then like you'll make some go extinct and sort of do that strategically so that your other ones can survive. And I just really liked all the like really tough decisions you have in this game. So Oceans, I know this is a popular game with a lot of people and honestly probably eventually I'm going to have to revisit it as I have played more and more games and have gotten deeper and deeper into it. But when I started playing Oceans, I love the ocean and I love sea animals. I, I scuba dive, I actually, I performed with sea lions and the theming with Oceans I wanted it when I saw it. I think I wanted it to be something that it wasn't. Mm, yeah, I, yeah. I, my expectations, I wanted to play a real life underwater game, but it was this animals that I don't know if they exist. It's like, they don't like, exist. They don't exist. Alien. Alien, <laughs> like very abstract. And I, it, when I don't get in, when I'm not into a theme, even if the mechanics are great, I just, I don't know. There's other games where I'm into themes and the mechanics are also great. So I just rather would play those. All right, last on our list is actually one of my favorite games. And it's a game that we recently included on our best board games for couples. And that is Lost Cities, the card game. So Lost Cities, I love this game. I think it is a great two player game. I love the, how snappy the turns are and it's quick to play. It's quick to teach. I love the theming with funding and exp uh, the expedition of traveling. And I like how you can watch the other person's strategy and kind of figure out what they're doing. I love <laughs> games like that where I can she kind loves of predict. To mess me up. Okay. So mechanically, I love Lost Cities. It's a really great game. Uh, what I will say though is one of my favorite things about games is being immersed in the theme and really feeling like I traveled somewhere. I, at the end of the night, I want to feel like I was in a different world and I came back to my apartment. And with Lost Cities, I just don't feel that. It's the cards are, you know, the, the art's fine, but it doesn't really tell me where I'm going. It doesn't tell me a lot of fun information about it. There's just not a whole lot to like go off of to like learn, of, you know, there's, there's no story. So to me, I'd, I'd pick another game. But I, when I sit down and actually do get to play it, I'm like, wow, this is, this is fun. So that just goes to show that every person is going to have a very different opinion about games. And I think that's also something we really want to say is that when you're going out to pick games for your family or for your partner or your significant other, really think about what that other person likes too, because yeah. ain't yeah. nobody having a good time if the <laughs> other person is absolutely miserable at the table and, or maybe they won't ever even play it. So take in their opinion, introduce yeah. them slowly to new subjects if you're trying to get them. But really, that's what I always recommend when people are trying to introduce people to board games, find a subject they like, because people will be able to grasp onto that and they'll really be able to enjoy yeah. that and find a love and passion for gaming 
just like we did. Yep. All right, everyone, and that is six games that we disagree on. Let us know down in the comments, do you have any of these same opinions? And also, what about you and your partner? Like, let us know down below, what are some games that you disagree on? Yeah, also, if you wanna try to sway one of us, like if you think that we should have a different opinion than we do, or you wanna sway us to the good side, then just like, let us know <laughs> what your arguments are below. Clue, 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 <laughs> clue. All right, everyone, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can know whenever we put out a new video. All right, guys, see you next time. Happy, Happy playing. playing.